My girlfriend and I have a 31-year-old roommate who expects us to do everything for her. She gets mad when we don't cook for her. Today I finally snapped. I, 21M, and my girlfriend, Emily, 20F, live together with a roommate, Alice, 31F. We all contribute equally to our monthly house food. Food meant for everyone, not one specific person. Budget? We can still have our own food, and as long as we communicate so nobody eats someone else's food. A couple weeks ago, I made myself and Emily some spaghetti with the house food. Just noodles and generic brand can sauce. Nothing fancy. Quick and easy because I was feeling lazy. Alice was at work until late that night, and myself and my GF ended up finishing all the spaghetti. When Alice came home, she saw the dirty pot in the sink and made a comment about being sad there was none saved for her. I asked if she wanted me to save some for her next time I made it, but she didn't really give me a straight answer. I got the feeling she wanted me to though, so I made a mental note to do that next time I made spaghetti and moved on. A few days later, I made some pork chops. Again, nothing fancy. Emily wasn't hungry and didn't eat her portion, so I offered it to Alice when she came home. She accepted. However, when she put the food in the microwave to warm it, she made a face as the smell hit her. She tried not to let me see, but I could tell she wasn't thrilled. She took the food into her room to eat, which isn't unusual for her, so I don't know if she finished it or what. Since then, whenever we're in the kitchen together and I'm cooking, she's been kind of hovering over my shoulder and trying to give me advice on how to season my food. And honestly, sometimes it's good advice. I'm one of those people who views cooking as a constant learning thing, so I don't mind taking suggestions. However, she gave me an attitude whenever I didn't do something how she wanted or liked. It was always subtle and unspoken, until yesterday. I was making spaghetti again. When I make spaghetti, I keep the noodles and sauce separate, so everyone can choose how much sauce they want. Alice has seen me make spaghetti before, but this time she said I made it the white people way. I feel it is important to note that she is also white. She said I should mix the sauce in, and I told her that wasn't how I make it. She told me that she liked it better when it was pre-mixed, and here's where I maybe went too far. I told her I don't care how she likes it, because I wasn't cooking it for her. I told her that when I cook, mine and my GF's preferences are the only things I consider, because the food is being made for us, not for her. If she doesn't like it, she has her own food to make, and there is nothing stopping her from eating that. She got all huffy and stormed off, and later on Emily said my tone came off a bit angry. I wasn't angry, I was just stating a fact, but maybe there was a way to put it more gently? I don't know. I'm told that I can sometimes come off as an asshole without meaning to, that I have one of those resting faces that makes me look angry all the time even when I'm not. So am I the jerk? Relevant comments. Commenter. In age, as it sounds like y'all are all working a system that doesn't make sense. Like, if I contributed financially to the food you're cooking, I, too, would like to want to eat it lol. Y'all need to just have separate everything and cut the drama. Commenter. Change up how you do groceries. You and your GF buy your own and let Alice buy her own things like basics condiments, spices, flour, sugar make community property. Alice is wanting someone to cook for her that's the bottom line. You told her straight up and many times people see being straightforward as rude, abrasive, etc. When I say something I say it, I don't use a lot of pretty flowery language. But that's me. Intia. Commenter. I think you all need to sit down and rethink the whole food dynamic. If you continue to pay the food together, then you need rules. For example, the person cooking has control of the receipt without the other one hovering over their shoulders. You pay the food separately, to each their own. You pay for yours, she pays for hers. I'd go with NH, leaning towards NTA, only because I think she is more of an asshole than you hear. Nowhere you mention her cooking for you. If someone were to cook for me that often, I'd shut it and eat what is on the table. If I don't like what they are cooking, I'd cook my own meals. Commenter. Info. Does she ever cook for you and your GF? Is there some agreement that cooking is a shared responsibility for the whole house where you all take it in turns? If so, she can cook how she wants it when it's her turn. If not, she doesn't get a say, and she can simply decline your cooking and make her own. Either way, you are NTA. Op. I cook for myself and my girlfriend. Alice cooks for herself. House ingredients are for use by everyone, but our meals have always been separate up until now. Sometimes we offer each other leftovers if we don't want them, but that's kinda as far as it goes. So I guess the short answer is, nobody really cooks for the whole house. We cook for ourselves and sometimes share. Commenter. What the F is white people spaghetti? I'm black and I make it like you make it, sauce and noodles separate. This is not the first time I heard this shenanigans. Actually, the correct way is to brown your ground beef, add mushrooms, diced garlic and diced yellow onions and pour prego over it and simmer. Serve the cooked noodles in a colander over steaming water and the sauce from a pan directly on top. 
My whole family is black and I've never seen this mix it all together way. I mean Chef Boyardee comes all mixed together, but he's white, right? Editor's note. Most of the commenters voted in TA or NH, with some ESH. There were a small handful of white EAs, mostly downvoted. I have included one for balance. Commenter. White EA. The food you're making comes from common funds. She has the same amount of rights as you two to eat it and to comment on how it's made. By the way, that shared food fiasco is a bad idea and you'd all be better to let go of it. Update 1. Hey, so I posted online and then fudged off for a bit, and the post sorta of blew up. So I wanted to pop in and clear up a few things. One common misconception was that I was only using house food for the spaghetti, so allow me to clarify. The noodles were house food, but the sauce was a specific, albeit generic, brand that I prefer to buy, so it was my food. Our house food mainly consists of staples like pasta, bread, eggs, milk, etc. Things which are easily customizable to suit each person's tastes. The pork chops I mentioned were also my food. Another thing was that people seemed to be assuming that I was cooking her portion of the pasta, considering she would have technically paid for one-third of it. I can sort of see where this is coming from, but this was brought up back when she first moved in, and we agreed that figuring out thirds like that when it comes to this just complicates things further. We operate under a, if you cook it, it's yours mentality. So the pasta that I made was not half hers and half mine, it was just mine. This system has worked for us for over a year, and I sort of doubt that's the root of the problem. Also, with the first spaghetti meal mentioned, I made enough for two people. Me and my girlfriend, that's it. I did not make three portions. The second time, after I figured out she wanted some, I made three portions since she would be eating with us. I don't know why people assumed I was making more than I needed, but then again it's the internet and I bet some people are really just like that so it's not like I can blame y'all. All that said, the answer I saw most often was that a discussion about the food budget needed to be had and things needed to be properly split between the three of us. And while I'm on the fence I do think it's worth bringing up with Emily and Alice. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give Alice a bit more time to calm down though, since she still seemed cold when she left for work earlier. Update 2. Myself, Alice, and Emily all sat down together last night after Alice got off work. I brought up what happened the other night with the spaghetti and explained how I saw things. To sum up what I said, I told her that while I appreciated her help sometimes in the kitchen since she had more experience than me, I didn't understand her insisting on something as small as stirring the sauce in or not, when she could simply stir the sauce in herself on her own plate. I was mindful of my tone and my wording this time around, and I think that helped. After I had said my piece, Alice let out a long sigh and apologized. She explained that she had a long day at work that day, and when she came home she was pretty moody and ended up taking that out on me. She said that growing up her family always mixed in the sauce and she had never actually eaten it the other way, so when she saw something she perceived as new her brain just kind of flipped out about it. I told her I understood, and I apologized for maybe coming off more annoyed than I actually felt. I also took this opportunity to explain to Alice why I eat spaghetti this way. My older sibling has autism and is an incredibly picky eater, and when we were kids, they would refuse anything that wasn't plain buttered noodles. So the separation of noodles and sauce was our family's way of accommodating them, and I guess it just sort of stuck with me since it's how I grew up. She said that it made sense, and I told her if it really mattered I could stir her portion of the pasta when she's having a rough day. She smiled and said it's not necessary, but I heard this tone in her voice again so I think I'm going to do it anyway and see how she responds. Since so many people seemed confused or concerned about the house food system, I decided to bring that up and ask if it was in any way relevant to this. She said no, that she really didn't mind the system we have. She said it probably would have happened no matter what I had made. Since in her mind right then anything that wasn't made her way was wrong. Emily also agreed that as of right now our house food system is working, and neither of them saw reason to change it. After that we just kinda hung out in the living room for a while, talking about weirdly specific food preferences we have in the same vein as stirred spaghetti. Turns out we're all picky about some random food item, and it only makes sense to us. Like, I'll only eat hot dogs if they're not made with actual hot dogs, but polished sausage. And it has to have mustard. Not sure if it's then called something else and honestly, don't care. Not the point. Point is, our strange and specific food preferences can be accommodated more often than not. Except Emily putting ranch dressing on her spaghetti. I love her, but some crimes can never be forgiven. Relevant comments. Commenter. Glad y'all came to an agreement, but ranch on spaghetti? That reminds me when I'd make homemade mac and cheese and my wonderful brother would put ketchup on it like I did all that work why are you ruining it? Loudly crying face. Commenter. Since you mentioned you liked learning, I just want to chip in on the sauce mixing thing. I won't say it's objectively correct, 
but generally the recommended way to add sauce is with about a half cup of retained pasta water per LB of pasta after draining but before the pasta is totally al dente. This allows the pasta to absorb the sauce into the noodles, takes one to two minutes, and better with some butter as well, while it finishes, which leads to a creamier and more integrated sauce. Adding it afterwards makes the sauce kind of slip off the noodles, and makes it harder to mix in parmesan or herbs along with the sauce. Of course, if some people don't want sauce at all, that's not really possible. Unless you separate the noodles in portions before they finish cooking, which you could do for your roommate if you'd like to be extremely considerate, but that's a lot of effort. Maybe if the roommate is around while you're cooking next time, you can have them finish the noodles for their own portion their way and do yours your way? Update 3. So, things have been chill for the past week or so, but last night really took a turn. Alice came home with a new air fryer. Emily and I already have one, so we were a bit confused. She set it up on the counter and was super excited about it, saying how it's the best one on the market and how we're going to love it. She was practically buzzing with energy, and Emily and I just exchanged looks, not really sure what to say. Alice then mentioned she got it at a discount because she knew a guy at the store, and she insisted we try it out that night. We had already planned to make tacos, so she suggested we make air-fried chicken tacos. Sounded good. So we agreed. I'm prepping the chicken when Alice comes into the kitchen and takes over. Like, full-on shooing me away from the counter. She's chopping vegetables at lightning speed, talking about how this air fryer is going to revolutionize our meals. Emily is watching with wide eyes, and I'm just standing there, spatula in hand, feeling like I've been hit by a culinary tornado. Alice finally lets me put the chicken in the air fryer, and she's adjusting the settings like it's a spaceship control panel. She's so into it, I half expect her to start narrating like a cooking show host. The chicken comes out perfectly crispy, and I gotta admit, it's some of the best I've had. We all dig in, and Alice is beaming like a proud parent. Things are going great until Alice suggests we make dessert in the air fryer. She's got this recipe for air fried Oreos, and she's adamant we try it. Emily and I are pretty full, but Alice is on a mission. She's whipping up batter and heating the fryer again before we can say no. As the Oreos are frying, the kitchen starts to smell. Weird. Not in a good way. Alice is oblivious, chatting away about how we're going to have dessert every night now. Emily and I are exchanging nervous glances. The timer dings, and Alice pulls out a batch of what can only be described as charcoal-covered Oreos. She looks horrified, and for a second, I think she's going to cry. She immediately starts apologizing, saying how she must have miscalculated the time and temperature. Emily and I reassure her, saying it's no big deal and that it's just a learning experience. Alice nods, but she seems really shaken up. She cleans up the mess, and we all decide to call it a night. Fast forward to this morning, and Alice is in the kitchen, staring at the air fryer like it's her mortal enemy. She turns to me and Emily and says she's thinking about returning it. She feels like she's invaded our space and made things more complicated. Emily and I try to convince her that it's fine and that we actually enjoy the chicken tacos, but she seems unconvinced. Now I'm sitting here, wondering if we should just let her return it or keep trying to make it work. I don't want her to feel like she's imposing, but I also don't want to discourage her from trying new things. It's a weird balance, and I'm not sure how to handle it. Guess we'll see how this plays out. Update 4. Well, it looks like Alice decided to keep the air fryer after all. Emily and I managed to convince her that we genuinely enjoyed the chicken tacos, and we assured her that the Oreo disaster was just a hiccup. She seemed to relax a bit after that, and things have been mostly back to normal. Until yesterday. Emily and I had planned a quiet evening in, just the two of us. Alice was working a double shift, so we figured we'd have the apartment to ourselves. We were halfway through a movie when Alice burst through the door, clearly upset. She had her phone in one hand and what looked like a grocery list in the other. She ignored our greetings and stormed into the kitchen, slamming the fridge door open. Emily and I exchanged confused looks and paused the movie. I walked into the kitchen and asked Alice what was wrong. She spun around, eyes wide and frantic, and said she'd just gotten off a phone call with her mom. Apparently, her mom was coming to visit this weekend and expected a big family dinner. Alice was freaking out because she didn't feel ready to host such a thing, especially given our recent food drama. I tried to calm her down, saying we could help with the cooking and that it would all be fine. Emily came in and backed me up, offering to help clean and prep. Alice seemed to relax a little, but she was still clearly stressed. She started rattling off a list of things she needed from the store and asked if we could help her shop. Emily and I agreed, and we all piled into my car and headed to the grocery store. The shopping trip was chaotic, to say the least. Alice was darting up and down the aisles like a woman possessed, tossing things into the cart without much thought. Emily and I did our best to keep up, 
but it was clear that Alice was in her own world. We finally managed to check out and get everything back to the apartment. Back at home, Alice seemed to calm down a bit as we started organizing the groceries. She had a detailed plan for the dinner and was delegating tasks left and right. Emily and I just rolled with it, not wanting to add to her stress. We spent the rest of the evening prepping ingredients and getting things ready for the big day. This morning, Alice was up early, already starting on the cooking. She had me working on a side dish and Emily handling dessert. We were all in the zone, and things were going smoothly. Until Alice decided to use the air fryer again. She was determined to make air fried Brussels sprouts as a side, and she was convinced they'd be a hit. As she prepped the sprouts, she kept muttering about how this had to be perfect. I could see the tension building in her shoulders, and I tried to reassure her that everything would be fine. She just nodded and kept working. The sprouts went into the air fryer, and Alice set the timer. We all continued with our tasks, but I could see Alice glancing nervously at the fryer every few minutes. The timer finally dinged, and Alice practically sprinted to open it. She pulled out the basket and her face fell. The Brussels sprouts were charred to a crisp. Alice looked like she was on the verge of tears. Emily and I rushed over, trying to console her and saying we could quickly whip up something else. Alice shook her head and said she was a failure. That's when Emily, bless her heart, grabbed a charred sprout, popped it in her mouth, and declared it delicious. I followed suit, grimacing slightly as I chewed, and agreed with Emily. Alice stared at us for a moment, then burst out laughing. It was like all the tension melted away in an instant. She said she knew we were lying, but appreciated the effort. We all laughed, and decided to just make a simple salad instead. So now, the big dinner is tonight. Alice is still a bit nervous, but she seems to be in a better place. Emily and I are ready to step in and help however we can. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but at this point, I'm just hoping for a drama-free evening. Final update. The big dinner finally happened. Alice's mom arrived a bit earlier than expected, which threw us all off. Alice was still in the kitchen, frantically putting the finishing touches on everything, while Emily and I tried to entertain her mom in the living room. Her mom, a stern woman with an air of authority, immediately started making comments about how the apartment looked and the smell coming from the kitchen. I could see Alice getting more and more tense every time she poked her head out to check on us. Finally, it was time to serve dinner. Alice had gone all out. Roasted chicken, mashed potatoes, salad, and of course, her infamous air-fried Brussels sprouts attempt, we made a new batch that turned out perfectly. We all sat down at the table, and Alice's mom immediately started picking at her food, making little hemph noises that made Alice visibly cringe. Things came to a head when Alice's mom asked about the air fryer. Alice started explaining how she got it on sale and how we'd been experimenting with it. Her mom cut her off, saying, why didn't you just cook everything the normal way? This air fryer nonsense is just a fad. Alice's face turned bright red, and for a moment, I thought she was going to explode. But then, something amazing happened. Emily, who had been quietly eating her mashed potatoes, put down her fork and said, Actually, I think the air fryer is a great addition to our kitchen. It's versatile, and Alice has made some incredible dishes with it. I chimed in, backing Emily up, and soon we were both singing the praises of the air fryer. Alice's mom looked taken aback, and for a moment, I thought she was going to argue. But then she sighed and said, Well, I suppose if you kids like it, that's what matters. Alice looked like she was about to cry, but in a good way. She mouthed a thank you to us, and the rest of dinner went surprisingly smoothly. After dinner, we all moved to the living room for dessert. Alice had made a cheesecake, no air fryer involved, and her mom finally had something positive to say. This is delicious, Alice, she said, taking a big bite. Alice beamed, and I could see the relief wash over her. Once her mom left, Alice collapsed on the couch, exhausted but happy. We all laughed about the chaos of the evening and how we managed to survive it. Alice admitted that she had been so stressed because her mom is always critical and she wanted everything to be perfect. Emily and I reassured her that she did an amazing job and that her mom's approval didn't define her worth or cooking skills. We decided to keep the air fryer and continue our culinary adventures. Who knows, maybe next time we'll try air fried pizza or something equally outrageous. The important thing is that we all learn to support each other a little more and communicate better.